Hello, hello. Welcome to this video. I'm doing it a half an hour early because I have a client call coming up. So for those of you that have watched the other videos, good for you for really taking this time to learn more about your health and how hormones affect your health, energy and weight. And also, as you might notice, you're noticing how one hormone affects the other, affects the other, affects the other, and it really keeps you in a hormone link. Hormone. Oh, well, not a link, a hormone. <laughs> oh, circle. I forget what to say. When um, you're caught up in a hormone, like one hormone affects the other, affects the other, affects the other. And so it seems like you're trying to do things that are going to help your body be healthier and lose the weight, but nothing seems to work. Loop, hormone loop. That's what it is. Uh, because really the thing is, is it's not just one thing that is going to help you. It is truly about body, mind, spirit and um, about dealing with the whole you and taking into consideration so many things. And that's what we're talking about in these seven videos of the seven hormones that have to do, especially uh, need to be better regulated during midlife because they are really going crazy in midlife. And some of these hormones you may not even know about or may not even know some of the things they cause, some of the issues that they can cause. You may have heard about certain hormones, but not realized that by eating certain foods, it could make such a great imbalance in your body, right? So that's what we're also talking about. And if you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere else and not in my Facebook community, make sure to come and join us. It's called Women Creating Healthy Lives. It's a free Facebook group on Facebook for women over 40, okay? And that is where I share recipes, recipe videos, tips, techniques, um, trainings like I'm doing now on hormones, food, health, mindset, stress reduction, all of that, of course, relating to how you stay healthy and happy over 40 and beyond, right? Like beyond, even when you finish menopause, because I have completely finished. I finished at the age of 48, very young, very, very young. Um, but I really had to learn what was gonna work for me. And I've done lots of research. Uh, I've been a personal trainer, a raw food chef, um, and I've studied nutrition and hormones and so much trial and error, let me tell you. And I've worked with clients for, um, I started in raw food, helping clients with raw food in about 2011. And mainly I got into helping clients through the midlife phase when I began to go through the midlife phase. And I really realized all the things that could throw you off, all the symptoms, all the health problems, um, how what used to work doesn't work anymore, the foods now that are needed. And uh, I can tell you that if you are having a problem with weight loss and your, your belly's continually expanding and getting bigger and bigger and you're not sure what to do and nothing seems to work nothing and so you've really given up right you're like okay I don't think anything works I've tried everything well I can pretty much tell you you have not it is just that you've tried everything outside of um, getting help from someone who really understands this midlife phase and how even certain healthy foods or cause the weight gain and cause hormone imbalance during this phase of life and even the way you eat, like the food combinations can cause you to stay out of balance and cause problems. And of course, now then also we're dealing with stress, stress and emotions and the way you live your life and the way you think. All of those things um, can keep you out of balance. It's just absolutely true. I cannot tell you how much I've learned over all these years and then how many clients I've helped. Plus what I've learned speaking to the clients and, and to people who even just call me for a discovery call like, who I don't end up working with, just hearing their story. And I see so clearly what holds women back. I really can. And usually I get such a good idea. It's like, I can probably help you if you do these certain things. But also it's about, um, so we're talking today about the thyroid hormone. And in relation to the thyroid hormone, we're talking about grains. And you're probably going to hear things today that you haven't heard before because this information is just not out there. And when you're in the midlife phase, this applies to you even more. Okay, even more. In the midlife phase, you got to think of yourself as you're hypersensitive. What may have irritated you in your 20s, 30s and early 40s is going to irritate you 10 times worse during this phase of your life. Okay, it's because you are at such an imbalance. Your hormones are all over the place. That is natural. 
Now, it doesn't have to be that bad, but it's just that we don't know what to do. If you're not sure, how do I bring my body back into better balance? Because we're not taught this. No one is taught this. Doctors don't know. They don't learn hormones. They don't learn nutrition. So remember that. Regular MDs do not take any nutrition or hormone training. So going to them can be very frustrating. I am reading from this book, The Hormone Reset Diet by Dr. Sarah Gottfried, MD. And um, that's what I'm reading from for this information. It is information that I've studied and I help my clients with anyways, but I just wanted to really get this information out there to women who are interested in hearing something new that they might not have known before and can help them with their health, right? Okay, so the thyroid hormone. Let's just talk about this. Nearly every person who struggles with weight has an issue with grains, particularly those that contain gluten. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. So even non-gluten. So if you are, what I see all the time, and here's what I see all the time, which is just hard for me to believe. Women in midlife who struggle with their weight are still consuming muffins, breads, bagels, uh, tortillas, as in, you know, the whole wheat ones. Um, I need more lipstick like next day, I think. Things like that, sandwiches, half of sandwiches, like eating these types of things that I'm like, you're not going to lose weight. You're going to continue to have that weight. And yet they don't really realize because I don't eat, I don't eat a lot of them. I don't eat, all right, gluten-free. If you wish to lose weight during this phase of your life and to bring your body back into better balance, it is, those are the, some of the things you need to give up. Do you have to give them up forever? No. No, not forever. Maybe gluten and wheat forever. But you do not have to give up grains, beans, lentils, starchy carbohydrates like potatoes and all that forever. No. But if you don't release them and change kind of what you eat for a certain period of time, and that'll help bring your, like reset your hormones. If you don't actually ever reset your hormones, they're not going to get into better balance. Like that's just the fact. So you can either think about doing something short term that's going to help the health of your body or you don't right it's short term or long term like if you think like well i don't want to give up these things well then you're not going to get results you want and you're going to continue to gain the weight and you're going to continue to have digestive problems you're going to continue to have this more and more and more and more and more fat in your belly it's up to you the link between grains and your hormone levels including leptin thyroid and insulin three of these cause weight gain cause you to hold on to weight. And I'm not talking just weight, we're talking your health, okay? So three of those things, right? Grains. Mm -hmm. People are so addicted to the breads and stuff, but I had to give all those up in midlife too. I also got high gluten sensitivity, but I found alternatives and it is totally okay. The alternatives work completely good. And all my clients say, Oh my God, I can't believe I don't miss bread. Like, I can't believe I thought I would crave these things. I thought I would miss them. I thought, no, no, no. Because you get alternatives, right? So, do you notice anxiety, depression, or schizo schizophrenia? It's, it's, you know what? Oh, this is really cool. There's a doctor called Dr. Russell Blaylock, and he is a neurosurgeon. And he did a test years ago, uh, controlled studies, on schizophrenia and aggressive prisoners in jail, right? So he did two control groups, one group of people with schizophrenia who were diagnosed with schizophrenia and on that medication. He did another study with a control group of um, violent prisoners in jail, like the angry violent prisoners. So he tested them for gluten sensitivity 100% of the schizophrenia people had gluten sensitivity, 100%. For the um, violent prisoners, it was very high. I think it was in the 90s or 80s were gluten sensitive, okay? And so what he did was he put these control groups on a special diet with no gluten, no wheat, um, of course, gave them a lot more vegetables, nutrients, really good, healthy foods, no preservatives, no sugars, no crap, right? 
And many of the people with schizophrenia got off their medication. And many of the prisoners, um, a very high rate of the prisoners, became way more passive. Like their anger started to disappear and they were, re re they were able to rehabilitate themselves as long as they stayed on the diet. Same with schizophrenia. If they stayed on the healthy diet, they were okay. If they went off, they began to get those symptoms back again. Okay. So you can look him up. His name is Dr. Russell Blaylock, B-L-A and then Lock. Uh, it was years ago I read that study, probably in 2011, 2010. But oh my God, that changed so much for me. These foods affect our, our brain, okay? So if you deal with joint pains, bone pain, brain fog, chronic fatigue, hair loss, eczema, ex eczema allergies, acne, um, un uh, unexplained fertility, right? Loss of balance and coordination, restless, restless leg syndrome, and thyroid problems, right? So all of these things can stem from eating gluten, gra various grains, wheat, all of that, because we need to remember that the wheat, grains, corn, gluten, all of that is very, very different than it was 100 years ago, okay? Genetically modified seeds, um, our grains are not stored the same, they're not produced the same, they're not processed the same, they're not handled the same. They're highly processed. So it's not the same. You can say, my grandma ate it, my parents grew up eating it, they are fine, not the same stuff, okay? All right. So there are also, in midlife, more women end up with thyroid problems than any other time of their life. And almost like, you know, when you're pregnant, you can also end up with diabetes. So I was pre-diabetic when I was pregnant. I was on the border of being diabetic. And that can happen when you're pregnant. Why? Because our hormones are different when we're pregnant. So when you're in midlife, same thing. We can have problems with insulin. We can have problems with our thyroid way more in midlife than we would at any other time of our life. So many, many, many women are misdiagnosed in midlife or they're not diagnosed with thyroid problems, including Hashimoto's disease. And this can lead to them feeling terrible and having a lot of sickness and not feeling good and not feeling right and having this huge weight gain and there's no way they can lose it. It's because their thyroid is not working properly. The thyroid test that your regular MD doctor gives you is not good enough to diagnose the problems you could be having in midlife. It's a very bland, I wanna say, it's like a test that is not good enough to really test your thyroid. So for a doctor, an MD, to tell you you have thyroid problems, you would have to be really bad, okay? But when you're in midlife, you can have thyroid problems that aren't really like horrible, horrible, but yet they're affecting you in bad ways. But yet the doctor will say, your th thyroid's within good limits, but really it's not, okay? So see a naturopath, uh, some sort of a natural type doctor that does specific testing for thyroid to check that out, okay? So, um, let me just see what this is. What does she say? It's just someone talking about their thyroid problem. Autoimmune thyroiditis. Here's another thing. Autoimmune thyroiditis, a disease in which the thyroid gland is attacked by the body's own cells. Approximately, get this, 90% of Americans with low thyroid function have autoimmune thyroiditis. 90% which means that one in every 1,000 people are affected, but many people have experiences similar to Gina's, which is just talking about um, her weight gain. She couldn't lose the weight, how she was feeling. You feel very tired. You feel very cold. Um, you can feel brain fog really out of it, okay? So you can look up Hashimoto's disease, all type of thyroid, like hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, and a thyroid immunitis is what does they call it. Autoimmune thyroiditis. Okay. And then just see, oh my God, is that something I could be suffering from? Then your regular MD will not, not pick it up. Okay. Just want to tell you that right now. Okay. 
I'm just reading what she did. She kicked grains so she went gluten free. She began certain thyroid medication and um, within 72 hours she was feeling better. So she has a book. It sounds like she has a book called Beautiful Inside and Out Conquering Thyroid Disease with a Healthy, Happy Thyroid Sexy Life. <laughs> it's a long title. Grains can keep you addicted to the very foods that are causing the worst damage by making you hungry for more. So we know breads and stuff. People are like, once you begin to eat breads and you, you kind of get on that kick of eating these breads and gluten products, you just want more and more and more. You want them every day. That is the addiction that they have, okay? Grains cause blood sugar level spikes. So especially in midlife, your body processes carbohydrates differently in midlife. And now we're talking about not broccoli, cauliflower, and that we're talking about the carbohydrates of bread, rice, beans, lentils, um, anything like that, any type of flours, even gluten-free flour and gluten-free breads, right? Your body basically processes like it's a simple sugar, like it's a simple carbohydrate. Crackers are brutal and it goes right to fat. OK, and it also leads to addiction. You just get tend to get way more addicted to it. Oh, it's crazy because of the blood sugar level spikes that they give you because it's seen as a simple carbohydrate to your body. So this is why diabetes has become so big and even Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And why do we have way more Alzheimer's disease? Hmm, I wonder. There is more breads, pastas, um, the fast food industry. That's oh, just crazy. Bread and potatoes are the most positively correlated foods when it comes to how much food raise your blood sugar. Potatoes. Mm -hmm. Yams, the orange ones, are okay. But sweet potatoes and potatoes, this is something you need to stay away with for a bit. And now, so if you go to someone's house, you don't eat potatoes at home. But you go to someone's house and they're having potatoes, have the potatoes. They're not going to kill you for one night, okay? Potatoes are okay for you. They're not deadly for you. It's just that if you consistently consume them, they're going to affect you, right? Here's a study of 117,366 men and women aged 40 to 74 eating more refined grains predicted an 80% risk in heart disease, Okay. These refined grains, 80% risk of heart disease. Women are at a risk of metabolic syndrome based solely on their intake of refined grains, including rice and pasta. And metabolic syndrome means it keeps you in the insulin spikes, um, maybe even in leptin resistance. Um, your cortisol could be higher, so you can't sleep properly. You're gaining weight, you're gaining fat, you're getting fatter, you're getting fatter, and there's no way you can lose the weight. Okay, metabolic syndrome. The worst offenders are high glycemic foods such as cold breakfast cereals. So if anybody is consuming cashew or those stupid granola bars or cashew bars or simple carbohydrate um, like energy type bars or cereals, granola cereal, anything like that, really bad for you. Some of the worst stuff you can eat, period. Okay. Um, yeah, white rice, potatoes. Sorry about that. In a Harvard study of 83,000 women, an intake of combination of lower carbohydrates, higher proteins, and higher fats was not linked to, risk, to heart disease, of course. A higher glycemic load in the same study was associated with 90% greater risk of heart disease. Refined grains are linked to weight gain in women. Uh, white rice, pasta, pastries, donuts, and anything white flour, including cookies and cakes, and of course, all gluten-free flour products also. 20 years ago, we were told to eat more grains and cut out fat. That was wrong. <laughs> Diabetes tripled, okay? Toxins and mold called my mycotoxins are found in wheat and other grains. So it's the way wheat and the other grains are stored and processed. They end up with a lot of mold and toxins okay 65 percent of cereals contain at least one mycotoxin grains contain potentially harmful anti-nutrients be beyond gluten so it's not just gluten that's a bad thing <laughs> um so it's just talking about what they're called and how they can cause leaky gut 
uh, inflammation in your body, tons of gut problems. Um, yeah, leaky gut again, problems with the digestion, so therefore you're not um, absorbing nutrients, so therefore you're definitely not getting enough minerals. Digestive enzyme inhibitors, which cause leaky gut again. And so here's the thing. The grains, the bad grains, affect your digestive system. They affect your hormones and digestive system. And so therefore, your immune system is, so the food you eat, you digest. And if your digestive system is healthy, that's how it absorbs the nutrients, vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, all that brings it to your cells, right? How you get those nutrients into your body. But if your digestive system isn't working properly and it's sick and there's bad ba bacteria, not enough good bacteria, you're not getting the nutrients. So if you're also not eating food that's high in minerals and trace minerals and, and vitamins and essential fatty acids and good fats, if you're not eating enough of those foods, you're not getting enough nutrients either. So your body's starving to death. Okay. And this is what I see pretty much in every single woman I talk to when I talk one-on-one -on -one to women, pretty much every woman. I can tell you there's so few women that um, consume enough of the right foods in midlife that no wonder they're dealing with the weight gain and having problems with um, fatigue and not sleeping well and um, lower immune and inflammation, um, digestive problems, all of those things, okay? So... You're not eating enough of the good foods, plus you're eating some of the foods that actually really cause the bad problems within your body. Okay. And they just said that way back again, we didn't eat a lot of grains, right? Like hundreds of years ago, there just wasn't a lot of, or even probably more than that. So our biological body is not adapted to eating a lot of grains. And you'll also see some cultures that really are not supposed to eat grains and they get really obese when they eat grains and they eat less of their native foods, right? Women must be careful with carb restriction. Cutting out all carbs on a very low carb or ketogenic diet may lead to thyroid problems. I'm going to say that again. Cutting out all carbs or a very low carb or ketogenic diet may lead to thyroid problems, mood issues, adrenal dysfunction, and heart complications. Okay? So, when I hear people say, a low-carb diet, I don't eat carbs, carbs are bad for you, right? I get really upset because I'm like broccoli, cauliflower, Swiss chard, um, green beans, all of those things, asparagus, are carbs. You need your vegetables, okay? So if anybody here is on a really restrictive keto diet or paleo diet um, or low-carb diet, you really need to watch that, okay? Keto can be done good in midlife, but when you're doing it for a woman in midlife, it must be done right or you're going to get have more problems okay if you're trying to lose weight focus on a pound per day of vegetables and you'll get the carbs you need eat carbs such as um, sweet potato and we're talking about she's not saying sweet the white sweet potato yams so um, yams are great that's the orange ones yams not white sweet potatoes okay make sure you're getting vitamin D oh my god who is not taking vitamin D okay get some you need good fats you need minerals, you need vitamin D. Um, of course, if you're vegan, you need other things. Okay. When ingested, gluten can sound an alarm in your gut and brain, trigger immune overreaction, increase appetite, and hook you into overeating. It can punch holes in the wall of your gut lining, leading to bloating, creating an achy belly, and causing your immune system to malfunction. Even a small amount can cause discomfort. Gluten is quite different to digest for the majority of the people. You need, to, you need special enzymes to break it down. Some experts believe that up to 80% of the population lack sufficient enzymes needed to break down and assimilate gluten. When the gluten proteins are not 
sufficiently chopped down to size, they permeate the underlying immune tissue of the gut and lead to overstimulation of the immune system, autoimmune diseases, right? That means your immune system can backfire and actually make you sick. And one of those is Hashimoto's disease, which is greatly affects the thyroid. Several of the most serious health conditions we face, including diabetes, thyroid disease, and even autism, may be linked to gluten consumption. And like I said, when that doctor surgeon tested schizophrenia, schizophrenia patients 100% were gluten sensitive. So keep that in mind. Depression, anxiety, uh, bipolar, <coughs> anything like that. Anger, aggressive behavior, um, kids, adults should be taken right off wheat and gluten completely. Okay. And most dairy too. Gluten creates a perfect storm of the conditions needed for human disease. Um, so you may say, I don't feel, I feel okay when I eat gluten or when I eat bread or when I eat that. You may feel okay but your body is not being okay inside consuming it, okay? It's starting to break things down. It's not healthy. It has a negative effect on your body, negative effect, okay? That will show up over time. Sixty percent of your immune system is the layer, the cells of your small intestine. So that's what I was talking about too. Gluten in many prepared products. So gluten, so if you ever known anybody who's celiac, there's so many things they can't even, even ice cream, because a lot of the containers of ice cream have wheat in the lining of them. And um, cosmetic household products, um, tons and tons of things. Salad dressings, a lot of salad dressings bottled have wheat in them. So if you just start to read all labels, all labels, you shouldn't be consuming foods, packaged foods, all of that, that have preservatives, that have things, natural flavoring or asterisk spices, um, wheat, gluten, fructose, sugar, all of those things, right? So it's really make your own food. <laughs> so, you know, there's our gluten-free breads, muffins and desserts, but like what she said here too, and that's what I consider them, they're junk food. They're gluten-free junk food. So I do have gluten-free bread in my freezer, and I do eat gluten-free muffins sometimes, but I don't consider them food at all. I consider them candy, so, or junk food. So when I have a piece of gluten-free bread, I would have it like with an egg and some greens on top or something like that, but I don't consider it any kind of food. It has a negative effect on me. So because I don't consume preservatives or a whole bunch of junk stuff, then having those things every once in a while is fine. And I love gluten-free muffins that this one place makes here in Nanaimo. But I rarely have, I don't have them that often. And I didn't have any in midlife to lose weight, right? Now that I don't need to worry about my weight gain, I can have a little bit of them. But just watch those two. And the gluten-free muffins she makes herself and she makes them with completely really good ingredients. So I know the person who makes them. What else? Yeah, like I'm gluten sensitive. I'm not celiac. So I can go to a restaurant and have French fries that are fried in the same deep fryer as battered fish or something. Um, it's not the best for me and I, I still don't feel great the next day, but I can have them without really, really being really sick. But somebody who's celiac couldn't even do that, right? So, you know, you can feel things like, like um, you can have di diarrhea, constipation, um, what else did they say? You feel like you're, for me, it feels like my intestines are all swelled up and you can just feel them inflamed. It feels really horrible. Like I can feel for 24 hours, I can feel complete discomfort and really horrible if I um, contain something with gluten or something that has been produced close to gluten.
So wheat, so it's also wheat, rye, barley. I want to say that too, because some people think rye bread. Rye bread still has gluten. Um, spelt still has gluten. So spelt, rye, I think there's another one. Hmm. Yeah. I thought spelt was good. Oh my God, I ate spelt. And I'm like, oh, I feel horrible after. Just saying, you know, um, eating gluten can develop leaky gut, food intolerances, and fat loss resistance. That means you can't lose fat at all. Uh, food intolerances, all of a sudden you'll be way more sensitive to certain foods. Yeah, here it is again. Many women, particularly over the age of 40, <laughs> suffer from intolerance to all grains and gluten. And that is exactly what happened to me. And that's what I notice with pretty much all the clients I work with. When they go off grains, gluten, pastas, rices for the time being, beans and lentils, they're like, oh my God, like I don't feel as bloated. I can fit into clothes again that are smaller and it can happen really fast. Okay. I'm not craving sugar like I used to. I'm having more energy. So the thing is, is that, yes, in midlife, I had to give up a lot of those things. But did I give them up forever? No, because when I was going through those changes, I chose to really do it well. And then to bring my body back into better balance, body, mind, spirit, though. And then when I felt so much better in balance and I felt I didn't have the symptoms anymore. I wasn't gaining weight anymore. I had actually lost a lot of weight. I was feeling really good. Then I didn't have my period for a year, and then I didn't have my period for two years. Then I'm like, okay, I can begin to eat more foods again. And right now, I can eat potatoes, I can eat rice, I can, I don't eat pasta. Uh, I can eat potatoes, I can eat rice, I can eat beans, I can eat lentils. And I don't gain weight, but I don't eat them real often. Because I focus on more of the foods that actually contribute to health, better health within my body. Mm -hmm. people with slow thyroid function should go gluten -free. oops that's what she says um definitely if you have low thyroid um hypothyroid or whatever you should be gluten and dairy free for sure and low 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 on the starch starch carbs because your metabolism is slow right and you should be eating way more vegetables, fresh greens, good fibers from vegetables, from foods. Um, you know, smoothies, like really should be focusing on um, the good foods. High fiber. Wheat, rye, barley, oats, corn, durum, millet, rice, spelt. There we go. So also oats is another one which many women get confused about. Because if you're in your 20s, 30s, and early, even early 40s, and if you're following somebody in a fitness thing or a diet thing, and they are not in the middle, a woman in midlife, they're going to tell you to eat oats. And you're going to be eating these oats, and you're going to be gaining weight and not losing it at all. So during midlife, oats causes the weight gain. I don't care what the Heart Association says about it or how much fiber it has. But I can tell you one thing, oats will put on the weight. So oat cookies, oat, oat um, flowers, all of those things, even if it's gluten-free, guys, going to cause the weight gain. Not going to lose the weight. That's just the way your body sees it as a simple sugar, takes it in. Instead of using it for energy, it puts it right on its weight. The fruit, like we talked about in leptin, right to fat. Okay, but there are ways you can eat certain things so that your body doesn't put it right to fat. And that's what I do show you in my programs. Also talks about artificial seasonings and flavors. I always talk about those things. They are brutal seasoning, flavoring, natural flavoring, hydro hydrolyzed vegetable protein, multidextrin, modified food starch, all of those things. Don't consume them. And here's what she says, very limited fruits, avocado, olives, and coconut. That's pretty limited. 
Now, what I say about certain fruits is if you eat them in a green smoothie where you're combining them with, let's say, chia gel and hemp seeds and maybe a protein powder, but also the green powders, which are protein, minerals, essential fatty acids. If you're combining them with fresh greens, you know, like a few fruits with fresh greens, with your chia and hemp and your protein powders and your min and your um, green powders and all of those, you're getting more of a balance. It won't spike your blood sugar level because you're combining them with a lot of good fats, essential fatty acids, vitamins, minerals. So that and high fiber. So if somebody has a smoothie and they just use the green powders and they don't use any fresh greens or stuff in their smoothie or chia gel, no, that's not the same guys. You need to still have the full food in them, real food in them, okay? Green powders are fantastic, but don't just have almond milk and green powder or almond milk and protein powder. You're just going to gain weight. So with the almond milk and protein powder, you're going to gain weight. This is what it is. It's not good enough. It's not, your body's not getting what it needs. Okay. Vitamin D, vitamin D. She says it again. Vitamin D. Make sure you're getting your vitamin D. Oh, exercise is only about, get this, 4 to 20% of the story. So for those who are like, I'm, I got this midlife belly. I got this weight gain. Oh my God, I need to lose it. And you think, I need to exercise more. I think I mean, this is what you'll say. I'm eating healthy. I'm eating good. I Maybe I just need to exercise more. It's always the food. Who am I referencing? Oh, this book. This is the book I've been reading every day, Rosette. Oh, Rosette, I just talked to you. The Hormone Reset Diet, Dr. Sarah Gottfried. There we go. Yes. So I've been, all the videos I've done this week, I'm talking about the Hormone Reset Diet, and I'm going to do a 21-day program where we, um, her protocol is really, 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 really strict. But I do a 21 day program where we use some of the hormone reset along with my recipes and we do the body, mind, spirit. So we work with your body, mind and spirit, which she kind of does. But in my 21 day program, when we do the hormone reset and then we do the body, mind, spirit and you get all my recipes, um, that's what we go through. And so that's when you help to, your body to reset these certain hormones. Okay, so that 21 day program is going to be done. I'm getting information together. So if you're interested message me or think, yes, I'm going to do this 21 day program with me. That is coming up. Um, so four to 20% exercise. You got to get the food done first, right? And there is a different way to exercise in midlife. Um, jogging, running won't work. Just doing an exercise bike won't work. Uh, I mean, it won't cause weight gain. It's good for your health. It's not going to cause a lot of weight gain. Um, so there's specific exercise for midlife, but if you're under, if your cortisol levels are really high, or if you're stressed most of the time, exercise is something you need to do very differently because it is more stress on your body. So you need to really, really work with your decrease in stress and your food. Okay. That's a huge part of it. All right. Thank you very much. I see people are dropping off. So I'm going to end this now. Our next one is on the growth hormone. The next hormone we're going to talk about is the growth hormone and dairy. So for those of you who are wondering about dairy, uh, that's the next video. And I will be doing that maybe tomorrow, maybe on the weekend. I will let you know because I may be going out tomorrow night. So have an amazing night. Post any questions, comments that you have. Um, always let me know that you've watched this video, even if it's a replay, say hello. I have videos on YouTube. I have some free trainings on my website, dianamarchand.com. Check those out. Tons of information for you and start it. Start following some of the things I, and let me know how you do. Okay. Reach out to me if you're interested in my coaching and my programs. So much love to you guys. Ah, take these off. Have an amazing night. Bye.